you don't want to have all these different products aboard. This one does a lot of different things. It can also be used as a dielectric grease. Well, well, at least there isn't a whole lot of wind, it seems. Yeah, my dad called, watching it on the news, like, how are you guys doing? I'm like, it's just a rainy day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, we get these all the time in the summer. Because we're tropical depression on this hurricane. Yeah, that just means it's a big system. Yep. It, it does not mean that it's a hurricane. Yep. Yeah, or even a gale. Seized. Not seized. Notice? Yes. It's always the bottom one that's been seized where water and debris are collecting, and that's the one that never, the deck end doesn't want to turn. And these are fine. We'll spread some penetrant on here and let yep. them sit. Because it's that one seized, we know that's where it was. And look how deep into your travel you are. So wow. we're definitely going to want to take, and this one I'm sure matched. Like so it. we're going to want to take an inch off that one. For this, PB Blaster is really the best. It does seem to penetrate a little more aggressively than WD-40. Mm -hmm. Orange, though, it stains a bit more. Uh. Okay. Corrosion X, corrosion black, any of them will do the trick. Yep. Let it soak. These are right-handed threads, so lefty loosey. Oh, look at there. Wait, I couldn't move that before. Wow. Did nothing but just let it sit for a half hour with penetrant on it. And if it's really bad, add some more before yep. you go to bed. Let it sit overnight. And at a microscopic level, that stuff's gnawing its way down those threads. That saved this one. If I had just forced it, it would have gotten hot. Yep. Gall. It increases your chances of galling. So. My favorite turnbuckle lube. Oh, super lube. Synthetic grease. So this is what you use to lubricate threads on turnbuckles. That's what I like to use. You can use lots of products. Flamlin was the, you know, sheep's wool was the favorite for years. It works great. Problem is, in really high temperatures in the tropics, it will liquefy and run off. Uh -huh. um, it's sort of a brownish color. So you bump it and it's sustaining this. If I get some grease and it gets on my pants, not the end of the world. Um, it's clear, it doesn't liquefy in the heat. It's an excellent lubricant. You can use things like WD-40, PB Blaster, and Penetrance, but yep. those only last about seven to 10 days. The lubricating film they leave behind is a temporary film. They're great for penetrating, they're not huh. good for long-term lubrication. Tef gel can also be used here, but because Tef gel is sticky, like toothpaste. It adds some friction, it's just a little bit of drag. Oh. Uh, it's an excellent anti-galling corrosion preventative. I just prefer to use the Super Loop because I, bear in mind, I'm doing a lot of these, a lot of different boats on any given day. It doesn't slow me down, but if you want to be a little bit more patient with your own boat, Tef Gel. Tef Gel. Is, uh, is perfectly acceptable as well. It's like I said, it's a little bit gummy, so it's just, by hand, it's a little bit more tedious, but this is super slippery. But this Super Loop synthetic grease and, and Tef Gel, they both will last yeah. the test of time. How long will it last on well, shrouds you really and should, offshore boat? You know, when it's sitting in one spot, eventually it, it gets kind of wiggled and squished out. Yep. And rain washes it away, etc. although they're waterproof. Yep. But really, you should lubricate your turnbuckles every year. Hmm. The, the thing is, to do that properly, you have to get to here, so you have to loosen it and expose those threads. If you don't want to do that, at the very least, walk around and spritz it with penetrant. WD-40, PB Blaster, an aerosol, a corrosion block, something that's going to flood in there and work its way down. That's better than nothing. If they're well greased, you, 
probably could leave them for several years and they'll still come apart. Uh, the general recommendation is once a year you should undo all your turn buckles and In the perfect clean world, them. if not, yeah. at least spray them with penetrant. And if you do one at a time and mark it, open yep. them up, put it right back to the mark, you probably will not lose the tune on your cruising rig. Aye. But if you're not comfortable doing that, just spray them with some penetrant. The big thing is make sure they're they're properly lubricated with tough gel or super lube. To start with. When, you, when it gets tuned, and a good rigger should be doing that. This is a wire bristle brush. Uh, a little what? nylon bristle is an old toothbrush. Sometimes fits in a little better. At that point, I'm just I'm not getting corrosion out. I'm just knocking the debris out of there. Yep. So this basically is restoring this back to its former glory. So I'll take some super lube and put some on my finger and wipe it right there and right there. Then as I tighten the rigging, it, goes it all draws around. that in. If I'm gonna have to loosen it, I'll put it here and here so it draws it in um, when you're doing a tune. But a normal static tune, you do not completely disassemble everything. You're just tuning it. It's usually because someone says, hey, I've noticed when I'm on a starboard tack, the mass is really leaning off. And they just need a quick adjustment. Um, but a, a complete tune usually happens when the mask comes out or the rig is opened up for some reason or another. And this also makes an excellent winch crease if you don't have the actual... You know, really? Parkin, Lumar, all these winch companies make their own greases you yep. can buy with, with their name on. Um, usually there's some sort of calcium based waterproof grease. This will do the same thing. You can also use to loop gears on your on your windlass. So if you don't want to have all these different products aboard, this one does a lot of different things. It can also be used as a dielectric grease. Just put a little smear on the bottom of a light bulb socket, running lights anywhere you want to try to prevent corrosion. Something like that is good to have around. Super lube. I still prefer grease. to use the actual winch grease. Yep. Um, made by the manufacturer because it is specifically formulated for the slow spinning gears. Um, High pressure that they're, that they're dealing with, but any port in a storm, that, that is completely acceptable in a pinch. That's super lube. Great, well, I'll come back and I'll finish scraping those two out. Okay. What time should I meet you back here? Uh, one o'clock. All right. Thanks, Mark. No problem. Take advantage of this little lull in the storm go back to my boat and charge my camera battery. Actually, first, it's a Westell 32 that got hauled out a few days ago. And we met the owners. A couple that sailed the boat for about six years. And I think they sail back and forth, they said, between um, Lake Champlain and the Bahamas. And so right now they're they're on their way back north. Oh, and there's my boat. Without a mast, but pretty soon the rig's gonna go back on. I can't wait. You just can't call a dockside technician when you're 200 miles offshore. So you are the technician. And if you're not willing to do that, get your hands dirty and have tools on board, know how to use them. You have no business. You have no business offshore.